Welcome to Code with Kurt, the channel that brings you the latest Google Sheets and Google Apps Script videos. In today's video, we're going to take a Google Sheet like this with all the data in there, and we're going to convert that into a web app where you can display the table here, but we're also going to put a sort method on each column, and that sort method is going to be ascending. So if I click color, it's going to send order the rows by my color here in ascending order. So black being the first and yellow being last. And I can do the same thing with the year, which is going to line all those in order here. The same with miles and so on. So I'll show you a step-by-step -step process of how I put this together. If you're new to this channel, subscribe to catch my latest videos. Let's get started with this video. Here I am on my Google spreadsheet. I have a table here with Columns, color, year, miles, model name, and make name. And my data, data is below here. So I have no formulas in here. This is just straight data here. My sheet name is data down here. And that is all I have for my spreadsheet set up here. Next, I'm going to move into my script editor. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my project a name. I'll call it Web App Google Sheet Sort. Hit rename. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in my Google App Script code. There I have it copied. I'm going to hit save. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my HTML file. I'm going to click HTML. I'm going to hit the plus sign. Hit HTML. And now I'm going to call it display sheet. Let me hit enter. And there it is. And it's important that this display sheet is the same, exactly spelled the same as it is right here. Because this code is what's going to call this. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to copy in my HTML code. So that is copied. I'm going to hit save. I will post this code below the video so you can copy and paste it as well. It will be in the comments section. Next I'm going to go through the code. So I'm going to start with my code.js file here. And my first statement here is the do get and this is a standard Google Apps Script function. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking my HTML file which is called display sheet. I'm doing an HTML service create template from file and then I'm doing evaluate in the return and basically what this does this renders my HTML file so it pulls up into my displays my web app basically this gets the whole thing going so next I'll bounce over here to my display sheet because this is what's going to come up so the first thing I got here is my typical setup with the HTML and then I got my header tag I got this link in here I'm using bootstrap C SS. I will have a document documentation link in here to show you where to get this library but you can also copy and paste it with the code that I will provide in the comments. Next I'll have this style set up here. This is more CSS code and I'll show you what, what I'm going to use this for later. Next I got my script so all my JavaScript is down here. And then that ends here with my header tag finishing and then my body is down here. With my header record of display Google Sheet Web App Sort as my header record. And I got a div with an idea of display table. That's where my table is displaying inside this div. And then I also got a script down here that says get record. So when this comes all the way through the last thing it's going to hit is this get records, which is a JavaScript function. As you see, I'm passing nothing in at this time. So I'm going to go up to my JavaScript and look at this function. And that is get records. Get records has a column that enters in. And I'll show you that later, how that works. But the first time through, what it's going to do is it's going to call a Google Apps Script function using this Google Script run with success handler. And then that function, Google Apps Script function, is attached to the end of this call, which is Google Sheet data. And again, the column is passed in here. So I'm going to jump over to my Google Sheet data. Hit save here real quick. 
So now my next function here is Google Sheet Data with the column coming in. But the first time I'm calling it, I don't have the column coming in. I'm just returning a null value. So here I'm doing my SS object here for my spreadsheet. I'm doing a data sheet for my sheet name data. Again, from my Google Sheet down here, data. And then I'm getting the range, which is the range is, is everything that's populated. So I'm copying this whole thing here, getting the range with this get data range function. And then I'm getting the values. So what this is going to put this in is, is a multi-dimensional array. Array starting with each row is a start, is an array, and then each side, each row is an array. So you got your 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven here, and then each row is zero, one, two, three, four. Multi-dimensional, each array starting with zero, indexed at zero. So now I got my array here. First time passing through, it says not equal nothing, but my first time it is gonna be equal nothing. So we're gonna go down here, all the way to the end here, down here. And then we're just going to return. So basically, we're just going to return everything that's in this table right now. So then we go back over here to our data sheet. And what that's going to do is when it returns through here, this is the array that's going to pop through in this function. So I got a console log, and that console log is used for debugging. It is not necessary for the code here, but it does well in browsers where you can check the data coming in to your HTML file. Next, I'm going to be declaring a variable called display table. And basically, this is going to be a concatenation of string that I'm going to be pulling together. And an HTML string is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm starting it here, but I'm also doing concatenations with this plus here. So I'm just keeps building it. So from there, I'm doing this AR for each loop. So I'm going to loop through each, each array I got in my multi-dimensional array. So this is going through the top level of my array, each row basically. For each row, I'm doing a for each. I'm getting the item in the index of each one of those. So my item here is going to be an array. That's my row array. So for there, I'm doing a... I'm starting off when my index is eaten equals zero. So if my index is zero, that's my header record. So if I go back over here, again, zero here is color year miles, model name, and make name. So I want to make sure I'm going to put that in the th tags here for each column that I have for that. But along with that, I'm going to make an input HTML call here too with my class here and I'll show you my class that's my style up top but I'm gonna make that a button and I'm put the value and the value I'm putting in here is the header name and then I'm doing an on click get records so basically once this clicked I'm gonna be calling this same function again passing in the column number that I'm using so the first one will be zero. And then I'm closing that out with a TH. So you're saying the button here. So again, when I first demonstrate this in the beginning, it didn't look like a button on top. But what I'm using is a button input, but I'm using the style as button to link. So I'm making the button look like a link, basically. With this kind of just, this is just a simple kind of style. Button the link where I'm putting the background is no, none, the border is none, the color blue, and then the background none, and then this is when you hover over it and then it underlines it. So that's making the button look like a link. So for my header record, they all look like links that you click on. And then from there, for each data row, so if it, the index is not equal to zero, so every row after that is going to go down here. It's going to get the TD tags with the data for each column. 
closed out with the TR and then the tables closed out. And then once I got my string for all that, I am going to assign that into the div down below here inside my div and that's where it's displayed. So now we can go back through that again. Say I click on the first header record here. So let's just go through color here. So I click on color. So again, it hits this, get records here with my column. So that's going to come up here. My column name's coming in. And then we're going to go back over here, going through all this. Now we got my column is not equal nothing. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the header record off, which is zero in my data values. That's the first row. I'm going to store that as header array. Then I'm going to do a shift on it. And what that's going to do is that's going to take my header row, the first, it's going to take the first row off my array. So I'm going to take a shift off of it because what I want to do is not, I want to shift the data. I want to sort the data, but I don't want my header record in there when I'm sorting because I don't want that part of the sort. So I'm removing it. And then the next thing I'm doing is I'm grabbing the first column row that I have. And I'm just grabbing the data value. So I'm going down here and I'm selecting basically red right here. And what I'm doing with that is I'm checking what kind of data type it is. Because depending on if it's a string or a number depends what I'm going to do with my sort, how I'm going to sort it here. So this is not equal number here. That's a function. That's a JavaScript function here. So again, data type is not a number. So I'm assuming it's a string. So I'm just going to run through this called data value sort. So sort is another function, JavaScript function, which I'll put documentation there for too. But it's a nice way JavaScript made so you can take in a multi-dimensional array or just a regular array and do some comparisons. So in this, I'm doing an A, the X column is upper case and then the Y. So this is like the first and the second value of your array and then it's going to do some comparisons. So A equals B, it returns a zero. If A is greater than B, it turns a 1 and then a negative 1. So this 0, 1, and negative 1 is how it places it in, in your array. And it reiterates through several times until the sort order is right. It gets through everything so everything lines out right. So if you want more detail how this sort works, I'll put some more documentation in it. But this is just um, the multi-dimensional setup for this sort. And it'll go through your whole array, go through it multiple times until the sort order is correct according to what column you put in, which I put the column in here. Again, if it is not a string, it, the function is pretty much the same except all you have to do is do a math thing of minus and now align everything out as well. And then after you get done through this sort method, this JavaScript sort method, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my header array and I'm going to put it an unshift on there, which basically is going to put this header record back on top of my array. So now I got all back aligned, all the rows are aligned, and I put my header re record on top. And then I'm returning that. So then it's going to go back over here to my HTML page. Again, I got the array coming out, setting up my table. I'm using this class table. That's my CSS class there. And then again, I'm relining all the things. I'm using this button for the header and then displaying the data again. So then I could select another column. It's going to run back through again, setting the column value back over there to sort things out. So that concludes the code here of explaining it all and that next I'll deploy it. So I got everything saved. I'm going to go up to the deploy, new development. I might go select type up here. I'm going to hit this setup button. I'm going to select web app. I'm going to select new. You can put anything in here for this description. I'm going to execute as me and only myself. Deploy. going to take me through authorization, 
should be next. Authorize access. I'll select my name. Advanced. Select down here. And allow. So now it gives me my URL down here, which I could click on. And now I can do my sorts. See how these act like links up here for my header. So if I select color, it lines it out. And if I select miles, it lines it out. I can show you how that console log works. If you go to more tools, developer tools, over here I got these arrays here and that's kind of the array I got that comes through and what shows that again is this over here on this HTML file over here on this console log AR that's what's displaying it over here so you can kind of see the data that's coming through and it's it's kind of nice for debugging And then uh, as far as the web app, if you just wanted to make some changes or something amongst your code here and you don't want to have to go through that new deployment, so, code, so every time you make a change in your code, your HTML, especially your HTML file here, you want to do a new deployment to get that exec file at the end. And that's the one you hand out to others to use as long as you're following the permissions here you have to open it up here to anyone with the Google account or anyone that that pretty much gives it out to anybody if you don't want to do that and you just want to test your new changes so you want to test it out you can hit test de deployments and that's going to give you a test link here and that always ends in DEV at the end and you can use that that helps just uh, you don't have to redeploy it every time you make a change say you want to change something test it out change it you can always use this link but if you want to hand it all those changes back you have to deploy and go new deployment put your new description in here and deploy and then to keep track of all your deployments you can go to manage deployments and here it should list out all your deployments and stuff each iteration you deploy. So that concludes this video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave it below the video. Until next time.